Are you looking for the best wildlife photography cameras? In this video we will look at some of the 6 best cameras on the market. Before we get started with our video. We have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Starting at Number 1. Sony Cybershot RX10 IV. The Sony Cybershot RX10 IV has everything you could ask of a bridge camera, and just about everything you could ask for if you're taking your first foray into wildlife photography, too. At its heart is a powerful 1-inch sensor, offering excellent image quality for stills and video alike. That's made possible by the 24-600mm slash 2.4-4 for lens, which is fast enough to keep you shooting at top speed in most conditions. That means up to 24 frames per second, with dependable phase detect autofocus that keeps up with the action. Its 4K video is crisp and clean, with well-controlled rolling shutter, the jello effect when panning back and forth, which warps vertical lines. The downside is that this technology comes with a fairly hefty price tag, the one that won't even buy you the camera body alone of some of the cameras later down this list. Number 2. Panasonic Lumix FC2500. Though the FC2500 is a slightly older model at this point, it remains a powerful camera and an attractive option for entry-level wildlife shooting, and being an older product means that it comes with a very competitive price tag as well. It lags behind the RX10 IV in a few areas, with its 24-480mm focal range not being quite as long, its aperture being a smidge slower at f-2.8-4.5, and the burst rate being about half. On top of that, the contrast detect-powered AF system isn't as precise or sticky as Sony's. All that said, it is notably smaller and better to handle, the touchscreen functionality is superior, it has a built-in neutral density filter, and it offers plenty of options for video shooters, with a log profile and the option for 10-bit 4.2.2, available via an external monitor. Oh, and did we mention that it's significantly cheaper? Number 3. Canon EOS 90D. The perfect Canon APS-C camera for wildlife, the EOS 90D replaces two of the manufacturer's former favorites, the 80D and 7D Mark II. Its pixel-packed 32.5MP sensor is the highest resolution APS-C sensor on the market, giving you greater detail as well as the headroom to crop into your pics, great for artificially extending the length of your lenses as you can still fill the frame with your subject. Canon's APS-C format has a 1.6x crop factor, which means that your lenses benefit from a 1.6x boost to their focal length. So if you were to mount a 100-400mm optic, it would become an effective 160-640mm, and not only can you natively mount Canon's full-frame EF lenses, you can also make use of the EFS optics that are specifically designed for APS-C cameras. Its speedy 10 frames per second shooting is offset somewhat by the limited buffer depth, though you shouldn't bump into this too much unless you do a lot of spray and pray. It also boasts uncropped 4K video and a fully articulating touchscreen, making it a breeze to shoot using live view in any orientation. Number 4. Nikon D850. Not only is the D850 Nikon's best all-round DSLR, it's the best all-round DSLR period. With its ultimate full-frame image quality combined with fast, though not lightning fast, speed, this full-frame camera is the tool of choice for many advanced amateurs and professionals alike. Its 45.7MP resolution enables you to capture shots in jaw-dropping detail, or to crop into your images and fill the frame if your lenses haven't quite got enough reach. The Pixel Dense sensor also gives you full-frame 4K video, though sadly shooting in live view, whether for stills or video, means that you lose the fantastic phase detect autofocus and are instead stuck with subpar contrast detect. The 7 frames per second burst rate is the joint slowest of all cameras on this list, being the same as that of the Nikon P1000, but it can be boosted to 9 frames per second if you attach the battery pack. That adds to the already significant cost of this camera, but if you're looking for the most complete DSLR then the D850 is your best bet. Number 5. Canon EOS R5. If we had to choose one camera with which to photograph wildlife, it would hands down be the Canon EOS R5. This is chiefly because of its incredible autofocus system, which is easily the best on the market right now, especially when it comes to photographing animals, where it is capable of body, face, and eye detection. On paper, Canon only claims that the R5 can track dogs, cats, and birds. 
In our testing, though, there hasn't been a single animal it couldn't recognize, track and lock onto. Lions, monkeys, turtles, iguanas, fish, skunks, meerkats, raccoons, sand squirrels, gophers, seals, fennec foxes, if it's got a face and eyes, the R5 will put an AF point on it. Best of all, it can shoot 45 MP images at up to 20 frames per second with full face and eye detection, and it can do so silently, so as not to frighten your subjects. Then there's the phenomenal 8K 30p, even if you don't shoot video, this is brilliant for stills as well, as you can extract a 35MP still frame from your footage, effectively giving you up to 30 frames per second shooting as well. Just beware of the 4K HQ and 8K video recording limits, as the R5 is rather infamous for its overheating issues. Number 6. Sony A1. Quite simply, if you want the most powerful camera on the planet, the Sony A1 is it. Its monstrous, full-frame, 50.1MP image sensor is stacked, meaning that it has a complex construction that enables ultra-fast readout speeds, producing an astonishing 30 frames per second burst shooting at full resolution. There is a caveat to this, however. The A1 isn't always able to maintain that 30 frames per second shooting when it comes to tracking subjects, which is compounded by the Animal AF which is good, but not as cheat code good as that of the Canon EOS R5 or R3. And Sony's new Bird AF, introduced on this camera, isn't very reliable at all, so be prepared to have to do some of the heavy lifting yourself if you're birding. While it trumps the R5 when it comes to video, since the overheating issues are much better controlled, it only has a tilting screen rather than a fully articulating one, which isn't optimum for shooting photos or video in live view. Still, a few minor hiccups aside, this is a phenomenally powerful camera that gives you unparalleled specs, though sadly, it comes with an unparalleled price tag.